Hey everybody, I'm Mark Danenberg with Options Moneymaker, and uh, we're here to talk about Profit Flow Analytics, which is um, a uh, outstanding, simple, profitable uh, signal, signal chart software for futures and options traders that was created by New Cycle Trading and Analytics. So we have um, um, worked with New Cycle Trading and Analytics to bring this to our community of traders, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Cycle Finder. Uh, the Cycle Finder is a indicator that was added to the Profit Flow Analytics chart. Uh, it was just added recently, and we just uh, announced it and offered it to the Options Moneymaker community of traders. So we're going to dig into doing some specific training on the Cycle Finder during this session. So this training should be considered a continuation of the original Profit Flow Analytics training uh, that you all received recently if you're a um, subscriber to the uh, charts. Cycle Finder is an indicator which was added to the Profit Flow Analytics set of indicators. So now there are three indicators and it adds another method for being able to identify an entry signal and it adds another method to identify an alignment across indicators. So I'm gonna dig into that a little bit in this session. So profit flow analytics now consists of three indicators and they appear on your uh, chart in the following order. If they're not in this order, it's recommended that you put them in this order and it's a, an order of logic in terms of how quickly the indicator identifies a new cycle. Cycle finder is on top right below the price bars. Profit flow oscillator is um, Built right below that, and then the trend consensus is right below that. So the cycle finder provides an early indication of a possible shift in the direction of the trend, and that's really what we are trying to identify here, is when is the intraday trend going to shift, how quickly can we identify the beginning of that trend, and go ahead and take a trade. So before we actually get to the charts, I'm going to do most of the training here uh, with the charts in front of you, but I want to give you some basic guidelines uh, so that if you're going back to review this recording, uh, you'll have this to refer to. Uh, the time frames that we typically trade for futures are one minute, five minute, and 30 minute. That does not mean there aren't other time frames that are um, good for you to work with. Some people like to look at the three minute, but the one minute, the five minute, and the 30 minute are the most commonly referred to time frames for the trading that we do. If you're an options trader, the profit flow analytics, including the cycle finder, work extremely well for options trading also, but we're gonna pull that back a little bit and probably focus primarily on the 30 minute chart using the, the five minute chart to time the entry. So if there's a signal that's presented on the 30 minute chart, I'm gonna glance over at the five minute and just make sure that there's not a counter uh, trade to the 30 minute. <clears throat> if there is, I'm gonna wait for the five minute to give me a signal and that way I'm aligning my entry to the direction that the 30 minute is telling me we are likely going to move. And then for stock trading, typically it's going to just be your daily chart. So on the cycle finder, entering a new position is really very simple. The basics of entering a position are as simple as you go long on a futures uh, position when you see a dark blue bar and you go short on a futures position when you see a dark red bar. When you see that blue bar, if you're an options trader, you're going to buy a call option or you're going to open some other long option strategy. And if you're a stock trader, you're looking for that blue bar in order to uh, give you a signal to go ahead and buy your stock. If you are an options trader and you see a red bar, that dark red bar on the cycle finder, you're going to buy a put option or you're going to open up some other type of short option strategy. It could be a call credit spread. Uh, it could be a put debit spread. It could be a diagonal spread, a calendar spread, uh, et cetera. If you are um, a stock trader and you're just not uh, a long-term buy and hold trader, but you're looking to grab a profit um, as often as you can off of your stock, then when you see that dark red bar appear, you're gonna want to sell the stock and then wait for the stock price to cycle back down. The, the indicators present a blue bar for you and you can buy the stock again. Now, 
the chart was designed by a group of traders and some really smart programmers at New Cycle Trading. And it is about as simple as it could be. You buy on blue, you sell on red. That's really as simple as it is. But where it gets a little tricky is when you have mid bar prints. So if the bar, the price bar, and the new cycle finder bar opens, but is not blue or red, but partway into the print of that one minute or five minute bar, it does turn blue or red. There's a decision that you have to make. And this right here, the mid bar entry, and then also the mid bar exit, which I will talk about, is where it requires a little bit of your experience, a little bit of understanding what your choices are. If it was simply as straightforward as it's blue, I go long, it's red, I go short, that would just be beautiful. But there are underlying indicators behind these signals. We've made the signals, New Cycle Trading made the signals very simple, but there are some variables, some gray areas in there that you need to understand. So when you're trading a five minute chart, five minutes, one of my favorite time periods to trade, and you see the bar come on, but not give you a signal to go long or short, but then partway into the print of the bar, so maybe two minutes in, one minute in, four minutes in, it does in fact give you a blue or a red signal. A good um, rule of thumb is to look at the one minute chart. Now in the Options Moneymaker Live Trading Room, we always have the five minute and the one minute up on the screen. Five minute on the right, one minute on the left. And I'm gonna show you that configuration uh, when we start working with the charts here during this session. If that bar, blue or red, comes on and you glance at the one minute chart, and I'm not talking about at the open of the bar, I'm talking about a mid bar print. If your bar comes on blue, two minutes into a five minute bar, and you look over at the one minute chart, and it is all set up to go long, where you have a cycle finder indicator going long, maybe the profit flow oscillator is also long, blue, then go ahead and take the trade. If the one minute, at the time that that blue bar or red bar comes on mid print, if the one minute is showing an opposite signal, then wait for the five minute signal to actually print and confirm. That is as simple as we can make it. If you follow that set of guidance, you can do extremely well even on mid bar prints. Now, when you're trading a one minute chart, if the bar is flashing, and what I mean by flashing is sometimes, especially the last few days, we've seen bars come on blue and then it, uh, it uh, turns off, goes back to gray, uh, and it just keeps flashing on or off. If the bar is flashing and it's not showing a steady print, this is only a one minute bar, folks. So just wait for the bar to close in order to confirm the signal. Waiting for that one minute bar to close will seem to some of you like an eternity, uh, but you don't have a shorter time period that we suggest that you reference. So just wait for the bar to close. If the bar flashes mid bar with a signal to go long or a signal to go short, and the bar shows a steady print, it's not flashing on or off, then go ahead and take the signal. The one thing you wanna look at there is you don't want the price to have moved significantly. You know, if it's moved a couple of points, that's not a big deal. If it happens to be one of those one minute bars where it's already moved 10 points before you see the signal come on mid bar, I would skip that trade and I would wait for the next signal. The thing about trading the one minute is that you're going to have another signal a few minutes later. The one minute you can afford to skip a trade even if you miss out on some uh, you know, big upside move. Um, but you don't want to put yourself into a situation where it's more of a hold your breath and hope it works out. You really want to take the signals that are giving you 
the best opportunity. So if you follow this guidance, I think you're gonna be okay. And frankly, when you're trading the one minute chart, when in doubt, just wait for the bar to print and confirm the signal. So when I say print, I mean that particular bar that is vacillating gives you a uh, fully closed bar that is either blue or red, and the next bar opens is always going to be gray. It's not going to be another blue or red bar. You won't have blue or red bars typically back to back, but that's okay. All you're really looking for is a confirmation that that signal was valid. Now, very similar with mid bar prints on the exit. So when you're trading a five minute chart, the one minute it can be used for confirmation again. If the one minute has reversed, tighten the stop. So if you're trading a five minute chart and you are long and you see the one minute actually show a reversal signal on the cycle finder, you don't necessarily have to close the trade immediately, but it's the first indication that the cycles and the patterns within the five minute bar might be reversing. So it's wise to uh, move your stop and protect profits if you have profits, or move your stop and reduce your loss risk if you don't have a profit yet. If the one minute is still aligned, then wait for the five minute signal to print. So if you have an exit signal on the five minute that is flashing on or off, or it came on mid bar, you can use the one minute as a point of reference to decide whether to tighten your stop or just take the trade off. <clears throat> Frankly, there are situations where you can just take the trade off if you want to. If you've got 20, 25, 30 points, uh, there's nothing wrong with taking the trade off. There's also nothing wrong with just tightening up the stop and if it continues running another 10, 20 points, well, you get the benefit of that upside, but you're certainly not going to run the risk of letting it go all the way back to your original 10 point protective stop loss uh, and give up all the profit that you have. When you're trading a one minute chart, again, if the bar is flashing but not showing a steady print, your exit bar, wait for the bar to close to confirm the signal, and if the bar is showing a steady print, just tighten up your stop if it's a mid bar. And also, when in doubt, wait for the bar to print to confirm the signal. But at any time you choose, you can tighten up your stop. Tightening up your stop makes a lot of sense when you've got profit, not letting that thing go back to um, incurring a loss. Tightening up your stop makes a lot of sense when you start to see the strength and integrity of the uh, direction that you are in, so the bias of the direction, when you start to see it wavering, just tighten up your stop. There's absolutely no reason for you to be, say, in a, uh, a one-point profit situation, not enough to lock in, and you see the signal wavering. You don't want to sit there idly and let it go all the way back to a 10-point loss stop. So in that situation, I might tighten my stop down to only three points, uh, I'm willing to risk three points. So if it moved back uh, four points against me, then I might be out of the trade and I'll just look for the next trade. This process is all about wisdom and management of your capital, but it is designed to use the chart as your decision making, not your emotions, not holding your breath and go, well, I need to lock this in. You know, I'm afraid I'm going to lose. Forget all that, folks. You want to use your charts. You want to trade your charts. Use them for every decision that you make. And when in doubt, tighten up your stop and um, uh, protect profits if you have them. All right, I'm going to jump over to charts now. Let's see here. Okay. There we go. So what we have, if you are not familiar with what we do in the live trading room here at Options Moneymaker, but if you are familiar with the profit flow analytics charts, we have on the right a five minute uh, NQ chart. So that's the NASDAQ 100 E-mini futures. And on the left, we have a one minute chart. So over here, we have the one minute. Over here, we have the five minute. So I wanna give you a couple of examples, uh, but first of all, I want to make sure everybody's on the same page in terms of what you enter on 
and what you exit on, the primary entry and exit rules, which are very similar to the rules that we talked about for the profit flow oscillator entry and exits. But I want to make sure we're all clear on that. And then I want to talk about some of those gray areas, the variables that are really requiring you to make decisions uh, during the day that are not 100% strictly rules-based. There's some guidance there, and it's going to require you to get comfortable with it. It's going to require you to trade in SIM mode for a period of time and really get your confidence that you understand exactly how to handle any situation. So I'm going to use the five minute as my uh, teaching tool here. The blue bar is telling me it's time to go long. I'm simply going to buy a, I'm going to go long on a futures position or I'm going to buy a call option or some other type of long option strategy. The red bar is telling me to go short. That's telling me that it's time to go short on a futures or buy a put or buy to open some sort of uh, short uh, declining bias option strategy. The gray bars that typically appear, but not 100% of the time, before you have a blue or red bar are kind of giving you an idea that we might be setting up for some sort of a move. And when you see big moves down or big moves up, you're going to start to see gray bars that are hinting that a directional shift may be coming. That doesn't guarantee that that directional shift is gonna happen immediately. Sometimes these gray bars print, and then you've got this gap with the underlying indicators basically interpreting that there's no strong bias one way or the other. And just in this example right here where there's a gap after there's a series of gray bars, you can see on the five minute chart that basically we just treaded sideways. We really didn't go anywhere. And that's one of the uh, real beauties of the cycle finder is it will help you stay out of some of those periods of time. All right, so very simply, you buy or go long on a blue and you sell or go short on a red. Once you're in the trade, now there are a variety of ways that you can choose to exit the trade, variety of ways you can choose to take profits or lock in a loss but you want to have something that you are comfortable with. Now we've talked in prior sessions about um, trailing stop triggers, size of trailing stop triggers, size of protective stops. Uh, we've talked about locking in manually. What I'm gonna talk about in this session is holding for the full cycle. I am not recommending one method over the other. It really is uh, an area of trading that each of you as a trader needs to get comfortable with. Maybe you need to test each of those over a period of time in sim mode so that you get to a point where you're 100% confident in exactly what method you want to follow. So the way I would exit if I'm using a full cycle method is I'm going long on blue and you see the profit oscillator, profit flow oscillator, is stacking higher and higher. That is supporting the trade, supporting holding the trade. And then it prints blue, and each subsequent blue bar is basically an interpretation of the chart saying you want to continue to hold this trade. We're not ready to get out of this position yet. And then here, the trend consensus actually now jumps into the mix and says, yes, we want to continue to hold. Now here, when trend consensus goes to light blue, and you've started to now print gray bars below the zero line in the cycle finder, this is what you're looking for right here. The primary exit criteria when you are holding for the full cycle is when the profit flow oscillator prints a gray bar below the zero line, or if you were short, it would be above the zero line. So when this bar opens, if it is below the zero line, you know that it's time to get out of the trade. So in this example here, this is just one example, if you were in at the open of this bar, you're in at 76, 95, 75, and you're holding, 
until this bar opens below the zero line and you're exiting at 77, 61, 25. So what is that? 95, 61, it's about 70 points to the upside. Now, if you're a trailing stop trigger person and you have it set for 10 points, 10 points is an excellent, excellent trade. 10 points is an excellent trade, but there's more upside coming. And I'm gonna talk about how you take advantage of that in just a moment. Before I get to that, there are a couple of things that can make this hold for the full cycle a little bit more complicated, which is what you have to learn. Hey, if everything was just simple ABC, this just would be the easiest, easiest, easiest thing you could do. It's already super easy, but there's just a couple of little things that you need to pay attention to. So <clears throat> now what I want to do is I want to show you what happened if this bar did not start blue, but in fact it started gray. If this bar started blue, and, or sorry, started gray, and let's say a couple minutes into the print of that bar, it turns blue, I'm going to quickly look over at my one minute chart. This is the 10.05 bar, and I'm gonna see where we are. Maybe I'm two minutes into it now, so maybe I'm at 10.07. So I'm gonna look here, and what I see is that there is a confirmation of the signal because everything on the one minute is telling me to be long. So I would feel confident in going ahead and taking that trade, even though I'm seeing the blue come on maybe one or two minutes into the print of the bar. If you see a situation where you're not comfortable taking the mid bar print, whether it be because of the one minute is showing you or because of what's been going on throughout the day and you feel more comfortable waiting for the bar to print, then you wait for the bar to print and if the bar closes blue, and as long as the next bar is not giving you any conflicting direction, including on the oscillator, the light red, by the way, on the trend consensus does not count as a conflict. Dark red might, but not the light red. We're primarily looking for, uh, looking to make sure that there's no conflict between the cycle finder and the profit flow oscillator. So as long as this bar opens gray above the zero line and the bar on the profit flow oscillator is above the zero line, you've got a confirmed entry to go long because the blue bar actually printed. You may not have taken it right at the open of that bar, but you're in on the next bar and you're in at 7707 and you still have a lot of upside opportunity on that. So mid bar prints are really important to pay attention to. You want to keep track of your trades. You want to keep track of your charts. And the five minute is really easy to do. The one minute, you really have to stay glued to the chart to make sure that you don't miss a mid bar print and uh, assess what action that you want to take. If that bar on the one minute had come on mid bar, I'm not looking at a different time period to confirm. I'm just wanting to make sure that there are no conflicting signals and that it's not just flashing on or off, uh, which the one minute will absolutely do. Hold on one second. All right, so that's mid bar entries. It really is pretty simple. And as you start to work with it, you'll understand it more. But um, it's important that you do a quick assessment when you see a mid bar print. And frankly, folks, if you just wanna be ultra conservative and you wanna wait for the bar to print, you're gonna miss some opportunities, but uh, there's nothing wrong with that to wait for that confirmation. I would not automatically wait for confirmation. I would still take the trade if the bar opens blue or if it opens red. 
and I would uh, take that trade. Now, if the bar opens blue, I'm gonna stay on my uh, 10.05 bar here. If the bar opens blue, you enter the trade, and in the next 30 seconds or minutes, partway into the, uh, to the bar, the bar reverts back to gray. Don't panic. Don't bail out of the trade. Don't flatten the trade. Tighten your stop. If you're starting with a 10-point protective stop, that um, occurrence might cause me to tighten up my stop to perhaps five points and only risk five points. And if you get stopped out, here's the thing to pay attention to. And this is what the beauty of having Cycle Finder with Profit Flow Oscillator and Trend Consensus is. If I tighten up my stop and I get stopped out of that trade, I'm looking for the next entry. I'm not done, but the next entry then is offered to me by the Profit Flow Oscillator. And I would feel comfortable taking that uh, entry right there because the cycle finder has not shifted direction. The cycle finder is actually still showing me a long signal. That was the blue. And since all the gray bars are still above the zero line, this is still a long signal. So I would take the trade as a continuation trade based on the profit flow oscillator. And then I would hold that trade until the gray bar on the profit flow oscillator um, opens below the zero line. All right, so that is um, opening on a blue or red. That is how to interpret a mid bar change if it comes on blue or red bin bar. And that is also how to interpret a mid bar change when it opens blue, you get into the trade, and then it reverts back to gray. This is all about managing your money, but it's managing according to what the chart is telling you. One five minute bar, the chart may be telling you go long. There might be a five minute bar a few minutes later that tells you, you know what, this might not work out. So you wanna protect the capital that you have. Still leave some risk out there, but there's no reason for you to leave the full amount of risk. One last thing about uh, managing your protective stop. If you start with a 10 point protective stop and you see the price move against you, and it actually, you can see how if you'd gotten in on the gray bar here, waited for the full print, you would have gotten in um, right here at 7707, and you can see that the price moved against your position. Well, you have a choice here. At this point in time when the price is moving against you, there's absolutely nothing on the chart telling you to get out of that trade. There's nothing on the chart telling you that this trade is not good to go long. When you see that, just like you might tighten up your stop from 10 points to five points, I might widen my stop from 10 points to 15 points. I don't wanna be stopped out of a position just before it moves. And I don't want to frankly be stopped out of a position if the chart is all still telling me this long um, direction looks, looks good still. So that's a judgment call that you have to make. And I could, I could argue both sides of it. I could say if I get stopped out um, for 10 points here, well, my next opportunity to get back in is right here. So I'm offered, whether it's a five minute or one minute, I'm offered multiple opportunities to get into the trade, and I may have to take a few losing trades in order to win overall. In this case, I might have gotten stopped out for 10 points. Uh, clearly I would have if I'd gotten in on the gray bar. I actually know that this bar, this 10.05 bar came on mid bar, so you'd be entering on the 10.10 bar, and you're in at 77.07, and it comes down to 76.86, you know, that's over 20 points. That may be well beyond the tolerance level you have for risk. So just let it hit your stop and then wait for the next entry. And then just using this as an example, and it doesn't always happen this way, but I wanna really emphasize that taking that 10 point loss doesn't need to be something that you, you are um, put off by or discouraged by. Then you take the next signal to get back into the cycle 
and that's the run that that's the one that runs for you 60 or 70 points. Um, that doesn't happen all the time, but you might have a losing trade, and then the next two trades are winning trades that offsets that loss plus gives you a gain. So the idea here is to get comfortable with mid bars. The straight up blue bar prints, red bar prints, that's super easy. The straight up exiting because the gray bar opens below the zero line and you're long, that's super easy. But when they happen mid bar, you have to make a decision. You're always going to make one of two decisions. You're either gonna close the position or you're gonna tighten up your stop. That's really, really what it boils down to. And when you're tightening up your stop, that's allowing you to wait for confirmation that that entry signal or that exit signal is valid. So that's what you wanna do. Now, a couple things about the exit signal. If this gray bar comes on mid bar, let's say the bar started blue and you have reinforcement that this is gonna continue, uh, I'm gonna continue to hold because I don't see any reason to get rid of it. Um, the gray bar then flips two minutes into the bar down below the zero line. I'm gonna tighten up my stop. When do I actually close then? It's when that bar closes below the zero line and the next bar opens below the zero line, I'm out on the open of the next gray bar. Because what I've done is I've confirmed that the first gray bar now actually printed below the zero line, even though it might have started above the zero line as blue. I now see that it's below the zero line and those two bars below the zero line are really your first clue that uh, this signal that you took to go long is starting to weaken and you should consider getting out of the trade. So in on blue to go long, out when you have gray below the zero line, in on red to go short, out when you have gray above the zero line. If the gray uh, bar above or below the zero line comes on mid bar, tighten up your stop, protect profits that you might have or reduce your potential loss and wait for the open of the next bar. One other um, scenario <coughs> would be if you are, let's see, let me find one here. All right, so let's say you are short and the gray bar comes on mid bar above the zero line. So you're tightening up your stop, but you're not taking the trade off. The next bar, and that bar then closes above the zero line, and the next bar opens below the zero line, which is considered a reinforcement of your short position. I would leave my stop where it is. You tighten it up here, but there's no way I'm gonna take the trade off if I'm getting additional reinforcement to continue to hold. And then I would be holding that trade until if this bar opened above the zero line, I'd take it off. So it's really all about measuring the um, where it prints and when it prints. If either your entry or your exit bar come on mid bar, you need to consider what else is going on. Tighten up your stop. If it's an exit mid bar print, take a look at the one minute. If it's a uh, entry mid bar print, and when in doubt, you could close out if it's an exit bar, mid bar. And when in doubt, you could just wait for confirmation of it to print if it's an entry mid bar. You don't have to make it super complicated. That one um, understanding and getting confident with how to interpret mid bars is going to make a huge difference for you in terms of your overall trading. So the cycle finder is designed to be the first entry into a new trend. And uh, you can see here, let's go back to our 1005 bar. You can see here that you might have gotten in there. And if you're using a 10 point trailing stop trigger, you're out of the trade for 10 points. That's nice. Your next opportunity, which would be a continuation trade of the same cycle, same trend is to follow the profit flow oscillator entry. And then if you took your 10 points on that, based on a 10 point trailing stop trigger or whatever you might be using, you're out of the trade. 
And then the next opportunity would be the alignment between the profit flow oscillator and the trend, trend consensus indicator, dark blue. And so you could take this trade three times for three 10 point profits if you're using a 10 point trailing stop trigger. So you got 30 points. Now you might not have you know, the 60 or 70 points that that cycle ran, but um, although we do have cycles that run 40, 50, 60 points, um, they, aren't the, uh, no, they aren't the norm every single day on every cycle. So taking 10 points, another 10 points, and another 10 points is really solid. 30 points in a matter of an hour, just by following the sequence of the cycle finder gives you the early indication, profit flow oscillator is a bit more confirmation of the trend coming, and then the trend consensus is ultimately the most conservative approach um, by confirming the trade that trend consensus is aligned with the profit flow oscillator. All right, um, let's see what kind of questions you have about this. Uh, Mark, yeah, stay here. Uh, Greg's asking, uh, he understands what you're saying, but wouldn't you exit on the 10-10 because the one minute oscillator turned red or does the five minute stay blue and over, does that override that or right. overrule that? Yeah, yeah. so um, at 10-10, uh, if I'm on the 10-10 bar, I go to 10-10 over here, um, I'm still long on the 10-10. The, the one minute, if I'm understanding your question, Greg, um, the one minute is giving me confirmation to stay in. But that said, once I am in the trade on the five minute, I am using one of two things to take me out of the trade. Uh, well, actually that's a misstatement. Let me restate that. There are a variety of ways that you can exit. But if you're holding for full cycle, there's one of two ways to uh, exit. Number one is you're just laser focused with blinders on and you're just looking at the five minute chart and you're just waiting for that signal reversal on the profit flow oscillator to take you out of the trade. The other way you could take yourself out of the trade is if the cycle finder on the one minute reverses. And I don't mean a gray bar reversal. I mean, if you're long, a red bar reversal. So in this case, if we were long at on the 1005 bar, I'm holding until the uh, 1115 bar, but at 1033, there was a signal on the one minute to go short. So that might be a clue for me to either take the trade off or I really want to tighten up my stop and lock in. That's the only time that I would refer to a one minute on an exit if the cycle finder is starting to show a reversal. He was actually talking about the 1011 bar, but I think you covered it then, Mark, I believe. The, the 1011 bar is what he was really deferring to, he said. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not using the gray bar crossover on the one minute to exit out of my five minute trade. There are going to be multiple cycles uh, on the one minute that are inside of a five minute bar. And so if I'm looking at that, then I'm taking my trades off of the, uh, off of the one minute. Now here's the thing, the one minute is almost always gonna get you into the trade earlier than the five minute, but the five minute smooths out some of that choppiness that you can experience on the one minute. So I'm gonna try to really simplify this. If you're gonna take your entries off of the five minute, then take your exits off of the five minute unless the cycle finder starts to show a reversal on the one minute. And in that case, if I hadn't already, I would definitely be locking in a profit, but I not, wouldn't necessarily be closing the trade, but I definitely would be protecting some of the profit that I have. Uh, Mark, Cheryl's asking about the consensus being below zero. And, and if you had a blue bar, on the cycle finder on a five minute and you had a red consensus, would that make you pause before you went long? All right, let me, let me, let me understand that. If consensus is below zero. And it's red. 
and is red. Now, typically the consensus is not going to prevent me from taking the trade. I mean, you can make it so ultra conservative, Cheryl, that you won't take any trades. Um, but just given my understanding of what's behind the scenes on each of these, if the trend consensus is uh, red and my cycle finder is blue and I don't have any conflicts with the profit flow oscillator, trend consensus is not gonna keep me out of the trade. I see Mike is asking, does the trend consensus mean bullish and bearish, or does it mean that blue is fully consensus to the up or downside? Basically, the blue, a dark blue on trend consensus indicates that you have a signal to go long. A dark red on trend consensus indicates you have a signal to go short. But the trend consensus is typically used by us more as a continuation entry when it aligns and confirms with profit flow oscillator because the underlying indicators are the slowest moving indicators and are giving you more uh, confirmation of that, uh, that signal. Let's go back to Cheryl just for a minute, Michael. She also says, I should have said, if the cycle finder is below the zero line, would you enter along? If cycle finder is below the zero line, you're not entering long. If the cycle finder is below the zero line, you're not entering long. If it's below the zero line red, you're going short. If it's below the zero line gray, you're taking no action if you're trading just the cycle finder. She might be referring to the if the oscillator like like around the eleven o'clock area there on the five minute if that level if say if that say if that was a continuation trade you wanted to take mm -hmm. would you, would you go long if that if the cycle finder is is below the zero line um, probably not if that's what you were referring to Cheryl probably not um, and that's way too far into the um, into the cycle I've already had you know six bars on the oscillator print. Uh, confirming the long signal. That's 30 minutes, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, the alignment to the trend consensus would get my attention, and there's no conflict on trend cons on cycle finder, so I might still take that trade. Uh, but typically, I am taking trades off of the cycle finder and then an additional um, uh, um, continuation trade off of the profit flow oscillator. More often than not, I prefer to take the cycle finder and hold for a cycle reversal, being smart enough to lock in uh, when I have a substantial profit. Uh, Chris is that asking if you favor the five minute or the one minute with cycle finder. My personal bias is the five minute, but I gotta tell you the one minute can be extremely productive and very profitable if you want to have that level of activity. Now I know Aaron has profiled both uh, in the room and you know you can have some frustrating days with either one of them and you can have some amazingly profitable days with either one of them. So it really boils down to what you are most comfortable with in terms of the amount of activity and the frequency of which you are taking your trades. You can have five, six, seven trades on the one minute um, from night starting at 9.30 Eastern time, market open, and you might not have had a single trade uh, presented on the five minute yet. But when that trade on the five minute presents itself, it can be a very, um, it can be a very profitable trade. Steve is asking to please give an example of using the one minute chart to confirm a new five minute or a new entry on the five minute. You mentioned this at the beginning, but I missed the example if you showed it. Yeah, so when I'm trading the five minute, I'm not using the one minute to confirm the entry unless my five minute signal came on mid bar. So 
I'm fairly sure that this 1005 bar did not open blue, that it came on mid bar. So if at 1006 it comes on blue, you know, we're one minute into the print, I just want to glance over at the one minute chart and I want to see what it's telling me. And at 1006, it's telling me I've got a signal to go long on the cycle finder and I've got a confirmed signal also to go long on the profit flow oscillator, and I've got a long signal on trend consensus. I would have no hesitation at all taking a mid-bar print on the five minute when I see that. But if this bar had come on blue, if it opened blue, I'm not wasting any time looking at what the one minute's doing. I'm just gonna take that trade. Uh, Mark, Steve's actually have some configuration um, questions about how to get the back, background a darker color, like the, like the black color you have. Aaron's, Aaron's groaning right now. <laughs> Co color theme, dark. Color theme, dark. You just right click on your chart and select dark or black. And then, uh, Steve, to change the uh, both charts to be able to have the same time periods, if you click on a 9 o'clock on the 5, it changes the 1 to, to 9 o'clock. So go up to the, to the screen, Mark, where you split the screen. Just click right there. See at the bottom here where it's got time? Just make sure your time's highlighted. Um, there you go. Now, th then it'll do both charts. When you click on the 9 o'clock on the 5, or vice versa, the 1 to 9 o'clock, it'll make the 5, five uh, minute nine o'clock or whatever time you are. Whatever you need. There you go, Steve. Uh, Christian, to make an observation, you're still trading just the first two hours of the market opens. Same signal works best from an hour before the market opens until 11, 1130, or do you, or do you come back and trade later in the day? So that kind of depends on the day, Christian, and it depends on what Aaron has going on, Michael or me has going on, because remember we're each trading our own accounts. Um, our, I think all of us agree that our personal preferences are to trade until about 11 or 12 o'clock. And if you've got a strong um, point production during that period of time, something that you could plug into your personal trading plan, which if you're not familiar with personal trading plans, it's a tool that we provided to uh, our community. So you can plug in your profit performance or loss performance on a daily basis and it projects out 12 months for you to see what you could produce. When you plug that into your trading plan and you see a number that would um, more than satisfy you, you can quit trading for the day with, with confidence. But um, I think the most productive periods are between um, seven and noon, with the majority of that coming between nine and 11. Yeah, JT's just mentioning the 30 minute chart. I'm just gonna flip over there for a minute. Uh, 30 minute is something that uh, one of our clients, Josh trades, loves to trade. Uh, Josh was um, in an interview with us here a couple weeks ago and uh, loves trading the 30 minute. So just as an example here, let me go all the way over here. Just as an example here, uh, today, I'll show today and tomorrow. Uh, if you took trades starting at 9.30 in the morning, um, there's a trade that tells you to go long at 10.30. So you're sitting on your thumbs until 10.30. Now you might have thought you missed out because there was a fairly healthy move uh, at 10 o'clock from low to high. But at uh, 10.30, it told you to go long. You've got a blue bar on the cycle finder. You've got a gray bar above the zero line. And although I don't always refer to the trend consensus, you've got uh, no conflicts in trend consensus. So you'd go long on that bar at 77.13. Uh, 
and then I would be holding that until gray bar below the zero line, which also happens to correspond to a red bar on the cycle finder. Now you can see that it kept going after that. That doesn't matter to me. I mean, that's upside opportunity that I missed out on, but what I did lock in is 50 points if I held until there's a reversal. So the 30 minute is, is pretty strong. And then yesterday, so easy to scan back on a 30 minute chart. Yeah, is that, is that the 30 minute mark? Yeah, I got a question about the 30 minute, so thank you. Yeah, yesterday, there was a signal to go short right out of the gate at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, and you're in at 77 and you hold that trade until right here at 1.30. So you're holding that trade from 9.30 to 1.30, but you're in at 77 and you're out at, I gotta go back and look again, sorry. Uh, you're in at 78.85, that's my bad. Nope, I did that wrong. Yeah, that's right. You're in at 78.85 and you're out at uh, 77.13. 7885 7713 170 points on one trade that's adequate um mark slot over till today leave the 30 minute chart up we got a question about that so yeah um let me find that question it just went away okay well somebody made a statement i don't know who uh, it's gone now but that said you, you would enter the trade at 1030 and you never would have got, st you never would have got stopped out, but that's not all true because if you're following the cycle finder, you'd be out on that red bar. Correct. If you went long there at 10 right here, you're out, yes, you're out on the cycle finder. You'd be, yeah, I'd be on the cycle finder. Yeah. But I think maybe what he was saying is if you're in at 77, 13 and a half and you're using a 10 point true protective stop, it never pulled 10 points against you. True. So your drawdown on that trade was six and a quarter points. Yes. And that's really one of the strongest features of the cycle finder is that typically the drawdown on the trade is less than any other entry you will take. Bob is asking, I, if I only have time to trade the first hour of trading, would it be best to use the one minute unless a five minute signal appears? I think that is a good approach. If your objective is to use the five minute, but absent a five minute signal, you're comfortable taking one minute signals? Absolutely. I think there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, Mike, uh, uh, Mark, Michael's asking, would you take the next trade on the red bar on that 30 minute? Would you have went short there? Um, so what did I say the, the points were here? 77.13 to, yeah, so there's 50 points. So there's two ways I want to answer that. One is if I'm up 50 points for the day, I'm done. Second is if I'm going to trade again, there's nothing wrong at all with taking that signal. Now, it didn't really work out. You're in at 77.63, but it's the next 30-minute bar that's telling you to get out. And so you're out at 77.65 and three quarters. So you lose a couple, three points. And that's the beauty of using the uh, oscillator uh, gray bar crossovers as your signal to get out. Is typically, if you get an immediate reversal on a signal that just didn't play out for you, you're not going to have a huge loss. You get back, you know, a few points. And then you wait, and then the next one comes on at 3.30 if you're an all-day trader. And you take that trade, and you're in at 78.28, and then I'd be out at, uh, at 4 o'clock regardless of what's going on. And so you're out at 78.22, so you make six points on that. So on those three trades for the day, you're up about 53 points. Christian is asking on that 30 minute chart, if the 30 minute is flashing, are you using the same rules as the five minute for the entry and exit? Uh, I'm gonna use the same rules. And what I'm gonna do is refer back to a five minute. 
So if the 30 minute comes on mid bar, I'm gonna look at the five minute. And if, as long as the five minute is not giving me a conflict um, by indicating an opposite trending signal, then I'll go ahead and take the mid bar entry on the 30 minute. Yeah, because you, you sure wouldn't want it if you had a if you had a 50 point profit and you well I'm, I'm going to wait 30 minutes. Well, look at the five because <laughs> it, it it can come back 80 points in 30 minutes. You know that of course. Yeah. So sometimes it comes to be just logic. You know, hey, I'm not going to let it come back against me. No way. So. Well, and let me say too that even though my objective is to hold for the full cycle, I actually have a trailing stop trigger out there at 40 points. Uh, Aaron has a trailing stop trigger out there typically at 30 points, even though her, that day she might have an objective to hold for the full cycle. And the reason is because whether I intend to hold for the full cycle or not, if it hits 40 points, I'm going to be out of that trade and I'm probably done for the day if I made 40 points on that one trade. Um, see, Cheryl's asking um, the wild swings coming the market open. Do you think it's wise not to trade at, to trade after the first fifteen or thirty minutes? I, I, I think our on our cycle finder. I think that's the biggest opportunity we have on the open to take Absolutely. trades. Now, yeah, I, I think so. Especially if you're looking at the one minute, because if you don't get a cycle finder um, signal right out of the gate on the five minute, look at the one minute. That may not come on right at 930, but 931, 932, you might have a signal that takes you up 30 points. But again, you've got to trade at a level that you're comfortable with. If you don't like all of that uh, volatility right out of the gate, which happens frequently, don't trade it. There's nothing wrong with settling in and taking uh, trades starting a few minutes later and, or waiting for your first five minute trade. Mike's asking, uh, when there is high volatility, you see the five minute change in color a lot mid bar. Um, you can, but you're gonna see that a lot more often on the one minute. Yes. And so using the five minute as your primary entry, when you see that mid bar change, you have the opportunity to reference the one minute and take the trade as long as the one minute is not objecting to the trade. Uh, Bruce is uh, asking, what day did you start trading the cycle finder? So we've been trading the cycle finder for quite some time just because we wanted to get comfortable with it. We wanted to test it and validate it. We have a lot of confidence in new cycle trading, but we needed to incorporate it into our team uh, before we released it to our community. So we've been trading it for quite some time. Um, last Thursday uh, was when we actually started profiling the cycle finder in the live trading room. And um, we were looking at the one minute signals for Thursday and Friday, which gave us a tremendous opportunity to really emphasize all of the things that we're talking about, those mid bar changes, what types of decisions you make, the thought process. And Michael was away, but Aaron and I discussed those extensively during the live trading room. And so hopefully that real time experience in the options moneymaker live trading room gave each person an opportunity to get more comfortable with uh, those trades. And then um, to, you're asking about the P&L for today. So uh, Michael uh, was trading the five minute today. And I know at uh, 11 o'clock, it was 1110, we were talking about it. Five minute was up 35 and a half points today. That, that was really a pretty simple day today on the five minute. One minute yesterday and today, has been a bit more um, uh, choppy in terms of the signals not always following through. And that's just the nature of the one minute sometimes. So um, five minute yesterday, five minute yesterday, I think was uh, Michael down 25 points. Yes. Uh, but the day before on Monday, it was yes. up 80 points. 80, 80 points, yeah. And then today was 35 and a half points 
by 11 o'clock. So you take those three together and you know it's an average of about 30 points a day. Christian saying, take the signal and open. Um, I used to wait and you will miss out on those indicators. Our solid don't always work, but keep your losses tight so you can make your loss back on the next cycle. Something we talked about today in the live trading room too, is if you have a mid bar entry, uh, especially if you're trading a five minute chart and you don't necessarily want to wait for the five minute to print, um, you're looking at the one minute chart, you can always enter and then scalp profits and then re-enter again on the beginning of the next bar. If you're out, you have a profit, but if it keeps running, then you're able to continue to lock in more profit along the way. Uh, Brent's can, asking, Mark, can you comment on the oscillator long signal while the finder is printing gray below the zero line at 1345 on the five minute chart? On the five minute, okay. Y yes, sir. Uh, 1345. Okay. Um, the oscillator long cycle finder is below the zero line. Um, I'm probably not gonna take that trade. Uh, and the main reason I'm not taking that trade is there's no preceding cycle finder ahead of that oscillator signal. So the last cycle finder signal was to go short, and now the oscillator is saying to go long. To me, there's a little bit of a conflict, and now we can look in hindsight and see that the oscillator signal was uh, pretty darn good, and it moved higher. But you have to remember here, I, I just wanna make sure everybody's clear, I'm not interested, none of us are interested in taking every single trade. I'm not interested in going back and going, oh, well, I should have taken that one because look at how well it turned out. Well, if I could trade in hindsight, you know, I'd, I'd be the biggest billionaire on the planet. But I'm interested in taking the trades that I know from my experience, which is why I encourage you to do sim trading. But from experience, I know that that's a much higher probability trade. So if I look at a oscillator trade and there's no preceding um, blue bar on the uh, cycle finder, I'm probably going to uh, ignore that. Also, it's 1.45 in the afternoon. And although there are some days I'll trade later in the day, I typically like my trading to be over with by noon. Now see here is an example of an oscillator trade that I would feel comfortable taking because there is a cycle finder uh, long signal preceding that. Ed's asking, trading the five minute, use the one minute to help with entry and exit confirmation. If trading the one minute, is there a way to confirm those trades? Well, Ed, that's what we talked about earlier. You have the advantage if you're trading the five minute by using the one minute. You don't have a shorter time period on the one minute. So if you have a mid bar print, uh, first of all, if you have a print at the open of the bar, you just take the trade. It, there's nothing else to confirm as long as your other, uh, your profit flow oscillator is not objecting to that direction. But other than that, if you have a mid bar print um, and it's flashing on or off, just wait for it to print and take the trade once it is fully printed. Steve's asking, what would you consider using for a trailing stop on the 30 minute chart? Um, because my approach is I want the chart to tell me when to get out of the trade, it doesn't really matter what time frame I'm using. I'm gonna leave a 30 or 40 point trigger out there. Because <clears throat> 30 or 40 points, I think Aaron, you're using 30 on your dome. I'm yeah. us using 40 on my dome. That's a number where it almost doesn't matter to me how much it moves. If I hit my 40 points or Aaron hits her 30 points, I'm happy to lock that in and then look for the next trade. So the time frame doesn't really influence me, but if it doesn't hit my 40 points, 
the chart is going to tell me when to get out of the trade. And you know, if it's moving steadily and I've locked in, let's say 20 points with a manual stop, and I wanna move my 30 point or 40 point trigger further out, I can do that too. Greg's just asking, uh, you wanna know a little bit about the uh, what's in the indicators. Um, that's something that New Cycle Trading developed. We provided a lot of input into it. Um, the things that you're mentioning uh, that might be sprinkled into the signals. We have, we have so many different indicators that are built into this that we've spent literally years here at Options Moneymaker refining and perfecting. And then when we teamed up with New Cycle Trading, we were able to uh, take some of their input also and combine that in a very simple signal. David's asking about stop loss when you're trading the five minute chart. We always start with a 10 point protective stop. If there's a sudden, abrupt, news driven impulse move and it takes us out, well then so be it. We regroup, we look for the next trade. If we're gradually moving towards that protective stop, but the chart is still telling us to remain in the direction that we hold, we may move that protective stop out of the way. So the default, whenever we open a trade, is to automatically set a 10 point protective stop. And that's because we've all seen in the live trading room <laughs> moves that just came out of nowhere. And all of a sudden there was a 50 point move. We don't wanna be on the wrong side of a sudden abrupt 50 point move with no signal telling us that that's coming. And so we leave it at 10 points, but we can gradually adjust that if we wanna move it out of the way a little bit and stay the course in our trade. See, so Mike's asking, does a trend consensus mean bullish or bearish, or does it mean that the blue is fully consensus to the up or downside and red is no consensus at all? Oh, no, no, red, red is consensus, dark red is consensus to the downside. Dark blue is consensus to the upside. Light blue is telling you that of all of the um, parameters that create the trend consensus, uh, it's starting to build consensus enough that you gotta pay attention to this if you're a trend consensus indicator trader. And light red is the same thing. But red is a downward bias entry and blue is an upward bias entry. Mike is asking if uh, he contacts OMM to get completely set up with the data feed or what is the contact information. So to get access to the indicators, um, there, Mark, you don't, did you have a link you were sharing earlier? I will do that, Aaron. Okay, uh, Mark's going to share the link here and you can just click on that. You'll get the information on how to purchase the profit flow analytics. And then once you purchase the profit flow analytics, you'll receive an email with how to set up a TradingView account. That's the account you would need. TradingView is the charting platform that the indicators are hosted on and also how to um, purchase the um, data feed, which is the uh, CMA Globex. That's how you get the access to the real-time data feed for NQ. Yeah, you go to optionsmoneymaker.com forward slash PFA and that gets you started in the process to get access to the profit flow analytics chart. Um, Ed's asking, uh, are you making a comparison trading the one minute and five minute charts? You know, perhaps it's market driven. You know, frankly, we're not creating a comparison right now. You know, there's so many different dynamics that will help determine whether you want to be a one minute trader or a five minute trader. Some of it depends on how much you uh, want to invest in time to trade. <clears throat> Some of it depends on, you know, how uh, strong you want the signal to be, how many trades you want to take, all those factors. One minute and five minute charts both work beautifully. I'll just say that. My opinion is they both work beautifully. If I'm coming in for a short period of time, I've got, you know, maybe an hour or so to trade, 
I'll focus on the one minute. If I'm trading more for uh, a few hours, prim primarily focused on the five minute chart. In the live trading room, Aaron does a great job, as does Michael, of profiling both, talking about both signals because we've got a mixture of people in our community wanting to trade um, different approaches. So again, I think it's important that you trade in sim mode, trade both time periods, and get comfortable with what you feel is the best approach. Understand this, doesn't matter which time period you trade, you're gonna have some outstanding profit days, and you're gonna have some other days that are not quite so outstanding. Five minute chart gave us 35 and a half points before 11 o'clock today. Yesterday, we lost 25 points. Monday was 80 points. Last Thursday and Friday, when Aaron and I were profiling the one minute chart, if you had traded the one minute chart all day long, which I have no interest in doing, trading the one minute, but I'm just giving you a perspective here, and you've taken every single signal, losing signals, winning signals, it was 110 points each day. If you'd taken every single signal, 110 points, wow, that sounds awesome. I love to trade, I'm an active trader. I have no interest in taking every single one minute signal all day long from 9.30 to four. Um, Roger's asking, and Aaron, you can you can elaborate on this a little bit too, but uh, the advantage of, of using a trigger trailing stop order versus a limit order. So Roger, let's just say you've got your limit order set it, it just make, just make it up, say it's 20 ticks, okay? That's where your limit order is at. And your trigger is set at 20 ticks. Say, and then you, the market moves and you get stopped out for 20 ticks. But if you've got a trailing stop and the market goes to 20 points and keeps going, you got a chance to make a lot more. And it happened several times this month. Uh, Aaron, what was it that you had a, somebody had a, a 10 point trigger, I mean a 10 tick trigger and they made that day the market jumped up 70 points. Oh yeah, it was a 14 tick trigger and they took 26 points. Yeah, 14 tick trigger is three, three and a half points. But they took, how many, 20? 26 points. Yeah, so if they'd had a limit order at, at, at uh, three and a half points, well, they'd have, that's what they'd have made but they end up making 26 because of the trigger and it followed it up. So that's, that's, that's the advantage I think of having a trailing trigger stop. Yeah. I think one of the ways to consider that is you can have a market that's moving rapidly and all of a sudden you get a, a very strong movement. You can't react quickly enough to lock that in manually. You just can't. We've all been through it. You've heard Aaron in the live trading room, those of you who are there, go, okay, I tried to lock that in and it just moved too quickly. But the automatic trailing stop trigger, it just kicks in and there's no, um, no rapid fire action that you have to take. Uh, Bruce is asking, are you willing to offer a short period trial for the indicators? Actually, we did that for the entire second half of August uh, when ProfitFlow Analytics was first released. So we don't currently have <clears throat> a uh, trial offer out there uh, for the indicators. New Cycle Trading has been very um, generous with us working with them, but uh, there's not currently a trial. However, the regular price of the ProfitFlow Analytics is $595 a month. And we are offering it to the uh, options moneymaker community for only $295 a month. And Brent, to your question, it is an automatic monthly renewal. You don't have to renew uh, the next month. You can cancel that and you lose access to um, the chart. You lose access to the indicators. But um, there's no requirement, but we automate the process for you so that it's an automatic renewal. You don't have to do anything. All right, so those of you who may not be familiar with the chart or who would like to learn more, maybe like to sign up for access to all three indicators, uh, optionsmoneymaker.com forward slash PFA. We are using the profit flow analytics chart every day in the live trading room, the Options Moneymaker live trading room. Primarily Michael and Aaron and periodically myself 
but we are talking about the signals, the one and five minute signals, and sometimes refer to the 30 minute signals. And sometimes more often in the afternoon than not, uh, maybe take a look at some stocks, uh, some ETFs or uh, cash indexes for options. But primary, primary focus is from market open um, through at least noon. We are looking at each signal that presents itself on the one minute and five minute and helping our community of traders identify what to do with that signal. Especially if it comes on mid bar, we're talking through it in real time, why we would take it or why we wouldn't take it. So spending a little time in the live trading room, there's huge value because you're getting a real time education that is uh, not something you can get simply in a training uh, session like this. This gives you the basics, it gives you about 90% of what you need to know. The other 10% comes from working through those scenarios and having a little guidance from an experienced team like Aaron and Michael and myself. Mark, you can probably speak to this. Ed is asking, um, are the experience what, how the uh, profit flow anal analytics works in the evening or pre-market hours? <laughs> works beautifully. <laughs> so uh, just as an example, Ed, and <clears throat> um, I don't want to imply that it's like this all the time, although just Last week, because we were just offering the cycle finder, I went through each night from 6 p.m. Eastern when the market reopens to 9.30 a.m. Eastern when the regular market session opens. And Monday through Friday last week, that, um, what is that, 12 was that a 15 and a half hour period? That 15 and a half hour period for the entire five day period was 370 points. That was following a five minute cycle finder only, not even taking into account the profit flow oscillator entries. That's purely cycle finder entry, the cycle reversal based on the profit flow oscillator. So for five days, 370 points. My view, Ed, is it can be a little different. You don't get, you don't all the time get the big moves, but then again, you can have some really nice moves. Most of the really attractive moves happen from 3 a.m. on. Um, but yes, it works just as well outside a regular market session. My personal bias is if I was sitting here throughout the night taking those trades, I'd be taking them off of the five minute chart. All right, guys, I don't see any other questions out there. No, I think we're good. Any, any other thoughts or comments? No, I don't, Mark. You covered it all from. Okay. Optionsmoneymaker.com forward slash PFA. That's going to get you started in the process to get access to what I consider to be some of the most profitable powerful signals that I've ever encountered in all my years of trading. So um, we love doing this for you. We love being able to develop uh, these things. Sometimes when we have to go outside and pull in other partners to do it, that's fine. We're willing to spend the money. We're willing to spend the time because ultimately it benefits us and it benefits our community of traders. Christian got a statement. I think that we we preached this in the room, and I know you mentioned it tonight. But he says, "I'm ready to pull. I'm ready to pull these rules to work together tomorrow." I think I said that wrong. But anyway, go live again on Monday. The sim, sim the next two days. Make sure all is good. Thanks, everybody. So that's the key. Sim the next two days. You know, that's great. Christ, Christian's been here a long time. So I mean, if you're brand brand new, I, I would suggest doing it more than two days. But but anyway. But that's a good job, Christian. Well, Christian's a fast learner. Yes, he is. <laughs> um, he's, got the, he's got, yeah, he does, he's got the same hair I got. Uh, <laughs> um, sorry, there's some other questions came up. What about other markets? Okay, so um, we we've traded what we're familiar with, um, and I believe that these signals work in any market. But what we are most familiar with is NQ. ES, which is the S&P 500 futures, 
RTY, which is the Russell 2000 futures, uh, bonds, and oil. Those are the markets that we are most familiar with. And these signals, um, they work just as effectively in all of those markets. Michael, I know you were tracking uh, some RTY trades today. Uh, was it the was it one trade you took? That, yes, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, one one trade. Yeah, I can't remember. I, I think four or five points, and and it's fifty dollars a point now. So yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. yeah. I think it was five or five. Probably I think it was five two fifty or something like that. But that's it was six points. I just looked at my notes. Uh, okay, thanks. So three hundred bucks on one trade. Yeah, that's, and that's one contract. Yep. Absolutely, Greg. Greg's just asking, do you think the market moves at 3 a.m. because that's when Europe opens? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that's when uh, all the fun starts. Mario, just a quick comment. I ended up 805 this morning, scalping the one minute, taking a few five minute trades. Good job, Mario. That's awesome, Mario. Uh, Jack's asking, would you still use a 10 point stop at night? Um, I would but I'm gonna watch my chart and I'm gonna let the chart tell me if I need to take action to uh, tighten that stop. Hey Michael, how about if you ask, answer this question? Ed's asking, is it reasonable to watch more than one market at a time? It's tough. For, for me it is, Mark, because you, I mean, Ed, because you're trying to watch, is it Jack? Ed, Ed, Ed. You're tr it's hard to watch the Russell and the ES and the NQ all at the same time because they can all change it. If you're changing the same time period, you got three five minute signals you have to watch and it gets, it gets to me, it's a little bit challenging. For me, it is. Listen, I, I think that the most effective way for you to trade is focus your attention on one market, whatever it is. Focus your attention on one market. If you could produce 35 points like um, we did today before 11 o'clock, you just have to decide whether that's enough. If um, you take a look at the last three days where we've had you know, a healthy losing day yesterday, 25 points, but the average of the three days is about 30 points a day, you just have to ask yourself, do I really want the aggravation of another market? Do I want that? Or am I really mostly just interested in getting my 10, 15, 20, 30 points of profit uh, and call them the day? Um, Jack, there is a replay feature on TradingView. Uh, it's up here. It's the double uh, triangles. It says bar replay. So you can go back and set that to replay the bar based on, um, based on the settings that you input. All right, no problem, Christian. Christian was just saying the mid bar changes was his biggest challenge. And that is why we're doing this training in this session. It's because the mid bar uh, prints of entry signals or exit signals can absolutely be the biggest challenge for anybody. All right, folks, we're gonna close out here. Uh, if you have more questions and you're part of the live trading room, let us know tomorrow during the session. Uh, other than that, if you are not currently a subscriber to Profit Flow Analytics and you're a serious trader, I think you need this in your tool set, absolutely. I think you're going to find that it is one of the easiest um, signal finders to um, ever be developed and to use, and uh, I think you'll enjoy trading with it. So uh, if you're already a subscriber, thanks for being part of New Cycle Trading and Options Moneymaker, and uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Uh, good night, everyone.